Hi, I'm Marley Morrison, Community Health Director for CHI St. Joseph's Community Health and Hubbard County. I'm meeting today by video with Jenny Rickers, Director of Clinical Care for Knut Nelson, and Ashley Yulitalo, um, Executive Director for Knut Nelson, Nelson Crystal Brook here in Park Rapids. They are here to talk about the changes to long-term care due to COVID-19 and the effects of these changes on residents and their families. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, COVID-19 has been particularly devastating for congregate care facilities in Minnesota, with the residents of long-term care facilities making up a large number of the total deaths for Minnesota. This has led to many changes in practice and a new normal for our residents and staff. So what has changed in your facility for both residents and staff due to COVID-19? Yeah, thank you. That's a great question. I want to start by thanking our residents and our families for for trusting us during this time to care for them. Um, it's a privilege to do so, especially during this time, um, and know that our team is trained for times like these, and then we remain committed to providing the safest and highest quality of care in our building. Um, some of the things that have been uh, changed in our building, of course, there's a multitude of things. We've been preparing for the eventual spread of coronavirus, and upon early notice of the potential impact, you know, we took immediate precautions based on recommendations from the CDC, World Health Organization, um, Leading Age Minnesota, among others. Um, some things that you can physically notice in our building that have changed, um, we're restricting visitors to enter only if there are end of life situations for our residents where we know they're in their last days and we want them to, to be able to spend some time with them. Uh, we're screening all visitors and staff who enter, enter and requiring them to meet stringent uh, protocols. So we temporarily closed all public spaces to visitors, to the public. And we encourage residents not to leave their apartments and um, keeping them in, uh, out of the designated areas as we're able to, like they previously were enjoying. Um, we've enacted masking. Um, we now have face shields in, in play dining and social distancing recommendations for both residents and staff. Uh, we're delivering meals to all residents at this time to their apartments. Of course, the clinical piece has been huge in this. We're implementing, we've implemented key clinical protocols to make sure the residents are safe um, and they're being taken care of. And then keeping our residents and families and staff informed to the best of our ability. It seems like things are changing daily and, and we're getting our um, new, new information out constantly. There's a lot of stuff coming out, but we, we try to communicate the best we can and over communicate when we, when we are able to, um, keeping everybody comfortable with what's coming as we know it changes every day. Okay. Also wanting to note, we have a home care agency in Park Rapids as well, Knut Nelson. Um, they can provide in-home services for skilled nursing and, and therapy. Um, they, they screen over the phone and then they, of course, use all the protocols that the CDC is recommending as well at this time um, if they were to provide care. So that's kind of what we have going on, some of the oh, changes. That's a lot going on. That's a lot of changes. Yeah. Um, how are residents and their families dealing with the changes? So our residents are and their families are understandably saddened during this time that they're not able to um, have their lifestyle and then the absence of in-person visits uh, with one another. However, um, they've been very, very understanding and um, looking outside the box and doing many different things, uh, waving from the parking lot, those types of things. Uh, we have done our best to help keep them connected and informed since COVID restrictions began. We've implemented a series of things, um, one of them being our eConnect program. So this is, uh, utilizes digital solutions for um, them to communicate either via video chat. Um, they can, families have sent uh, pictures that the families are set, um, lining up in their rooms and it's fun to go and look at everybody's lovely pictures. It's just a really day brightener for our residents. So continue to do that. Uh, we have a mobile app that our residents and families are using and we really do up-to-date information of activities and um, new happenings within that app. We have recently done an in-room TV channel that has really helped 
touch all of our residents. And uh, we do a daily morning stretch and a daily devotional on those in-room channels. And as well as we stream, you know, church services on Sundays and that kind of thing. So that's really, really helped. Um, and doing activities through that in-room channel has been a game changer and likely will use this far beyond um, COVID restrictions. And we've also done a um, website communication portal. So we do have an area where families and residents can go onto the Knut Nelson website and see the most recent updates, what we're doing within our organization. Mm -hmm. And so one thing positive out of COVID is just the use of our technology and how we're able to utilize that to keep people connected. And even though there's not that physical interaction or um, being in-person visits, we're able to physically, physically see them and um, talk with them and their families. And it's, it's making a really big difference, a game changer for our industry. Oh, good. Wow, it sounds like you really embrace the technology, so that that's really interesting. Um, how is staff doing with these changes to their practice? Our staff has been incredible. Um, They're on the front, front lines working diligently to provide the same loving care that they always have. Um, this will only continue. They are committed and creative and courageous, and we are grateful for their efforts. Their positivity through all of this is such a blessing and has led <clears throat> to many fun activities that have helped keep the spirits up of everyone at Crystal Brook, including residents and staff. Uh, we've had singing in the hallways, in-room bingo. Uh, we have a candy store that's on wheels. And then we, um, our staff actually served a special in-room steak dinner with candlelight for our residents. And it was it was really heartwarming and um, a great testament to how we really truly care about our, our residents like they're our family. Wonderful. So what are some things that people on the outside, families and friends or the public who can't visit right now can do to support those who are in long-term care? Yeah, that's a great question. One thing we strongly recommend is to stay connected with their aging loved ones whether they're at home or in a facility like Crystal Brook, it's key. Call them on the phone, talk to them virtually if you can, um, send cards, pictures, whatever you need to do to stay connected. It's important that they know um, you're safe as well as uh, you know they are. So it's, it goes hand in hand. So just stay connected, connected that way. Um, also thank, thank the frontline workers in healthcare. Um, they're doing everything in their power to be courageous, stay safe, keep your, our loved ones safe. Remember to reach out to them. There's so many great things going on in the community that we see and these staff, the courage they're showing, um, it really is stemming from a lot of that support. So it's great, great to have that. So we'd recommend continuing that and just letting them know how appreciated they are. Um, and lastly, just please know we're taking every precaution possible to safeguard um, as other providers are doing. So we've been aggressive, aggressively implementing precautions. Um, and of course, this virus is not going to be 100% um, preventable, but we remain vigilant to our efforts and advocate for those we serve. Um, our highest priority is the health and safety of our residents and staff. Okay. Well, thank you so much for taking time to answer these questions. This is a big issue in COVID-19 and how it's affecting our um, long-term care and our older population. Um, just as a note from Community Health, it's still important for everyone in the community to follow those social distancing guidelines because this is a safety measure you can control. So staying home as much as possible, keep your trips brief and to a minimum, and wearing a cloth mask helps protect the entire community. They're doing it in long-term care and we can do it out in public as well to help um, keep each other safe. Um, St. Joseph's Community Health continues to offer assistance for those who need help um, with obtaining essential needs, and we can also be a resource for MAPS, so you can call us at 218-237-5464. Thank you again, both of you. Thank you. Thank you.